Welcome to uh, Kennecook County Park in Vermilion County, Illinois. This is Thinking Biblically, and it is the what? The ninth day, <laughs> the ninth day of August in the year of our Lord, 2022. When you don't work for a living, it's hard to remember what day it is. You don't have to. So I'd like to take a look at God's Word. What does God have to say for us today? What does Jesus Christ have to say for us? to us today a lot a lot so we'll we'll look to the sermon of the mount which is near the beginning of his ministry uh, and we're going to turn to to matthew chapter six now matthew was an eyewitness he was a chosen disciple of jesus along with john those are the two primary witnesses the two Gospels that bear direct witness, evidence to Christ. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 24, which is the beginning of a uh, paragraph. No man can serve two masters. He will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is the god of riches, the god of wealth, the god of pleasure, the god of ease. Jesus said, you cannot serve God and wealth, money, prosperity. Now we have preachers today that make, that demonstrate that their god really is the god of mammon. People like Joel Osteen, Joyce Myers, <sighs> Kenneth Copeland, the Word of Faith movement, the entire corrupt movement, is a absolute denial of the Word of Jesus Christ and the life of Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Because they'll often say that, that God speaks a lot about money in the Bible. That's true, but it's all negative. The love of money, the greed, in fact, the entire economic system in America, capitalism, is the, the pursuit of of riches, the pursuit of possessions, the pursuit of power, greed, more than you need. The Bible says that's idolatry. That's idolatry. That's an abomination in the sight of God. We hear lots of preachers talking about other abominations, sexual abominations, but Jesus is talking about you know, greed. The, the apostles make greed idolatry, which is spoken against the worship of false gods. The worship is the thing is spoken against much more in the Bible, Old and New Testament, and using the strongest language than sexual perversions. Not that those aren't abominations too, but idolatry is far more common. The worship of things other than God, serving things other than God. No man can serve two masters. He will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve two masters. You can't. It doesn't work. You can't have two bosses, two lords. One will go one way and the other go the other. When I was a, uh, in high school, when I was still in uh, high school, I got a job working part-time in the, in the evenings for a, uh, a implement company that actually ran uh, some farming operations too. And they had three brothers that ran that place. And no matter what you did, you were in trouble with one of them. <laughs> because one would tell you to do this, another would tell you to do that, the third would tell you to do something else. You can't satisfy them all. You can only serve one master. Never get yourself in a job where you have to serve more than one. You will not be happy because your bosses will never be happy. You cannot serve God and mammon. I would say that the whole purpose of life is to come to know God. All Everything we see around here, everything is created by God. Doesn't, make, doesn't that make him the most important thing there is? Isn't that, must he, must he not be more important than everything else? Shouldn't all of life circle around God? 
Shouldn't he be the center of all things since he brought it all into existence? I think so. He made us for his pleasure and to share himself with us. So when we worship false gods, false idols, when we serve created things rather than the one who created it all, we are not giving God what his, his proper due based on who he is. We're serving things that are worthless and will perish. Money will perish. Just look at the history of other countries. Right now, you know, I wouldn't put a lot of trust in anything that's uh, in a bank or any place else. Even gold. Gold is not a, a, a safe thing either. Remember what Roosevelt did to gold during the Depression. You might want to look at recent history and see what happened to people's savings in Mexico, oh, 20 or 30 years ago. You went to bed at night, had, say, a thousand pesos in the bank. Next morning they woke, woke up and they only had, well, they still had a thousand, but they were reduced in value by 90%. So they had the equivalent of a hundred pesos. Therefore, I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat, food, and the body more than raiment, clothing? Behold the fowls of the air, for they do not sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Are not human beings the pinnacle of God's creation, according to the scriptures? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? Um, a foot and a half to, the, to his height. It could also be translated one cubit to, to the length of his life. One, you know, you, you, it's... Uh, there are things that are outside of our control, like how high we are, where we're born, what color skin we're born with, all kinds of things. We don't have the power to change those things. So all our efforts are decidedly weak. And why do you take thought for raiment, clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. They don't spend their lives or existence trying to work for a living. The, the, the flowers, the wildflowers. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. God just gives them beauty. He gives them what they need. They don't have to work for it. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven as kindling, just get the fire started, the dry grass, the dry weeds, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? God, will he not take care of us? We trust in him. He's the one that created us. He's the one that gives us life and all things. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you needeth, knoweth that you need all these things. In other words, it's not that these things aren't important. Jesus is going to explain that in the next verse, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
and all these things will be added unto you. What God is saying, what Jesus is saying, is that the purpose of life is not food and clothing. The purpose of life is to be reconciled with God, to come to know God. God is the center of all things. He is our purpose. He is our identity. He, he gives all things to us that we need. He provides us with life itself. But in this world, the temptation is to become so caught up in the daily things, food and, and drink and clothing, that we forget God. We forget the very purpose of life. That's what Jesus is teaching here. He's not teaching that you don't need these things. He's just teaching, no, your first goal ought to be, as he says here in verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of heaven to be part of God's kingdom, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. His righteousness, not your righteousness. Righteousness is simply means to be right with God, to be right in God's sight. And many people think it's by doing good works, by obeying a commandment, things like that. That, that is not God's righteousness. That would be our righteousness. But the scripture is very clear. By the works of law shall no flesh be justified. No one is right before God because of what he's done because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, fallen short of what God requires because we were created to be his image. And we don't measure up to that because we are, the human race has fallen in sin, fallen in rebellion, fallen short of what God created us to be, which is his image, his likeness, his presence in creation. So it's a matter of priorities. So seek ye first the kingdom of God to be part of his kingdom. And secondly, his righteousness, a righteousness God gives, not of us, but from him. And Paul explains all that, what these things mean in the book of Romans. But for right now, just consider what Jesus says, the priorities that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, points out to us that we should be living to become part of God's kingdom and to possess his righteousness. Both these things are gifts from God, just as eternal life is a gift from God. God freely gives us what we truly need simply by trusting him simply by trusting in his Son, Jesus Christ. Salvation is from God, is a gift from God, and it's on the basis of simply believing him and trusting him. That's good news. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to work for it. You just have to ask for it.